The story of North Carolina in the late 20th century can perhaps be told through the images of one photographer, Bruce Roberts. He began his work as a newspaper photographer in the 1950s. He saw and recorded it all. He saw the people and places, the struggles and work, the inspiration and joy. He saw things that were broken and where they could be fixed. He saw things with just the right shadows at just the right time of the day. And long before the invention of digital cameras and iPhones, he saw and captured iconic images of our history and our humanity. Well, I grew up just north of New York City. I was uh, born in Mount Vernon. Um, ended up going to NYU. I graduated from there. Immediately got activated and drafted during the Korean War. Uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I wanted to get back to the newspaper work. I think it was $70 a week on a, on a weekly newspaper in Hamlet, North Carolina. And I thought, you know, that's not bad. Uh, uh, so I took it, you gotta start somewhere. In 1958, Bruce was hired at the Charlotte Observer newspaper. Had a dark room next to the Linotype machine and uh, when the eight page press was going, I had to give up printing because it was vibrating too much. Bruce was one of a group of up and coming photographers there. Pioneers in the use of 35 millimeter cameras as well as in the use of natural light. They developed a uh, system particularly on Sundays, and they would call it enterprise, go out and enterprise, just drive around and photograph anything that you want to that looks interesting, that makes a good picture. And so that's how I started. I always worked that Sunday shift to get the front page of the paper on Monday morning. Bruce photographed leading figures of the time. Reverend Billy Graham with 100,000 people at Grandfather Mountain. John F. Kennedy campaigning in Charlotte in the fall of 1960. An almost unknown Elvis Presley, just two weeks before he appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show. He spent equal time with the uncelebrated. Had a chance to get out and drive around and photograph people like this in Maxton. His time in Maxton yielded a photo of a young Lumbee woman. I had no idea who bought it until a couple years ago. I got a call from the editor at Scribner's. He said, we're going to put your picture on the paperback edition of Long and Happy Life. Reynolds Price says that he had this picture up above his typewriter uh, most of the time he was writing the book. In 1964, Bruce spent weeks following Dr. Gaines Cannon in the remote hills and coves of Jackson County. Doc Gannon had just come back from working with Albert Schweitzer in Africa. He had decided to dedicate his life to helping the people in the isolated community of Balsam Cove. There were few telephones in the mountains then, but Doc would see patients wherever he could find them. Bruce's coverage became a book called The Physician in the Time Life series. North Carolina about that time, it really impressed me because it was it was progressive in business and it was progressive in, in politics in the sense that, that uh, it wasn't like Mississippi or Alabama. In 1966, Bruce was assigned by Look Magazine to cover school desegregation and busing in Charlotte. He spent several weeks at Villa Heights School. The photo of a teacher and student there remains his favorite image to this day. Now, he and his wife, Cheryl, live and work in Moorhead City. Eagles or birds are not... I see, yeah, uh, beautiful detail. Their home is filled with photos and mementos from throughout his career. Bruce says he has never stopped working. That's the sundown with the gentleman who's fishing. Mm -hmm. Bruce and Cheryl have created a series of books about lighthouses. 
Very beautiful, just, just beautiful. You know, lighthouses call to us, not just across water, but across history. In 1968, Bruce spent months covering the presidential campaign. And then in June, he was assigned to the funeral of Robert Kennedy. The resulting photographs led Bruce to compile yet another book, You Can't Kill the Dream. I want others to have the opportunity to see what photographers get to see, Bruce wrote in the introduction, not just the events, but the frailty and the courage of people. I'm 86 and I think I have done about 25% of what I really wanted to do.